Hey Mech Warriors, <clears throat> welcome to Bad Ben's Battletech. I'm Bad Ben, and today we're continuing where we left off from the last video. And what we'll start with is rolling for atmospheric pressures on page 108. Uh, you can go and read all of that yourself if you want. Uh, I think I understand it. <laughs> I understand it. So, what does it say? Roll atmosphere. Uh, no. Roll for atmospheric pressure is where I'm at. Not roll for atmosphere. Roll for atmospheric pressure. Page 108. And there's... You can see... Ah, okay. So we have the atmospheric pressure inhabited habitability table on page 108 and to roll this I'm just trying to figure out the modifiers here give me a moment sorry two rolls are made one roll right it's a uh, yeah okay right so the atmospheric pressure roll is modified by two factors. If the planet is closer to the star, uh, then the life zone subtract two from the roll. The only one that that would matter for, for us, is the dwarf terrestrial. It's the only one that's closer than the life zone. But it doesn't have an atmosphere. It says very clearly in the book, uh, atmosphere pressure we can just say it has a vacuum. They're too small to retain atmosphere. For our giant terrestrial, we don't have any other modifiers except for, ah, right, the escape velocity modifier, which we just calculated in the last one. Here is the escape velocity modifier for our giant terrestrial. So all we have to do is roll 2d6. What do I get? I got a 9. So actually that will... I said it probably in the last video that probably wouldn't make a difference. It's going to make a difference. It bumps it up to a 10, right? 9.9 .9 is closer to 10. So I go over on my table, page 108, atmospheric and habitability table, and I have a 10. Oh, it has a high pressure. Atmospheric pressure for our giant terrestrial is going to be high. This is the only, it's not going to tell you in like bars or anything. You get high, well, you can get vacuum, trace, low, normal, high, or very high. So for our regular terrestrial, um, it also applies its escape velocity modifier to the roll no other modifiers and it's is 0.88 uh, so I roll oh dear uh, I rolled I rolled a five but this is my this is my this is my habitable planet and um, I don't want it to have a low atmosphere and if I roll a five it will so you can just cheat I'll cheat <laughs> oh, what did I roll? I rolled a 7. You can just cheat and put in whatever you want, but I'll just do this for the laughs. No, I <laughs> if I did that, it would still be low. I rolled an 8 times, what's the escape velocity modifier? Uh, times 0.88 gives me a 7. Oh, look, medium, no, normal. Normal is the atmospheric pressure. That's the one I wanted. You don't have to do any silly fudge rolling. Just write normal in here if you want. Next we have our asteroid belt. <laughs> it has no atmospheric pressure. Next comes the gas giant, I believe. Gas giant. And it has, uh, I think, probably a ridiculous atmospheric pressure that we don't calculate. Next comes empty space which obviously is a vacuum, but we can just um, empty, yeah. 
I'm just going to write an A as well. The next is the ice giant. Also, don't care about that. The last one that we do care about is the terrestrial. Um, it gets its life zone or escape velocity modifier is 0 0.4, so that's actually going to really um, alter the dice roll. We roll the six. Six times 0.4 gives me 2.4, give me a two, meaning it's a vacuum. Ah, it's a vacuum. Uh, I don't want that to be a vacuum. No, we're going to give that a, I'm just going to go and say it has a low, just so that we can do its, um, down here, the atmospheric survey on it. If it's a vacuum, it has no atmosphere, you can't do an atmospheric survey. So we will be able to do atmospheric surveys on our giant terrestrial, which has a high atmospheric pressure, and the <coughs> terrestrial at the edge of the solar system, which has a low pressure. So that's all of our atmospheric pressures done. Calculate temp. Oof. Temperature. Calculate temp page 110. This one, this one gets weird, I think. <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. So here is the calculation. T is the temperature. Okay. Luminosity is the luminosity of this star to the power of 0.25. And you know what? I'm going to just do that now because we need that for all of them. So I don't have to recalculate that every time. Luminosity is 0.65. So we have 0.65 to the power of 0.25 equals 0.897, 0 0.897, going to jot that down on my paper, 900. So that's going to be this, luminosity to the power of 0.25. And we can use that same number all the time. We don't have to always do that calculation over and over and over. Uh, but the radius, so the R stands for radius, and that's the radius of the planet. We do 1 divided by the radius, and we take the square root of that. We divide it by the number we just got, 0 0.897900. We multiply it by that. Um, and then multiply all of this by 277, and it will give us our temperature. This is only going to be done on some terrest on the terrestrial worlds, I, I, I guess. The temperature of gas giants, I believe, is in the many thousands of degrees, and we don't do that. Oh, ha! I forgot something. Comp oh, I forgot something very important. We're not on temperature yet. We'll get there in a second. This will only take a second. Um, habitable. That's also on the atmospheric pressure table. I believe. Where is it? Habitable. My goodness. Atmospheric pressure and habit and habitability table. So we have to do both of these. And I'm actually, yeah. Uh, I'll roll for the um, for the giant terrestrial. Uh, it needs a nine or better. But it gets several um, modifiers to its number. So it does have high pressure, so that's a minus one. Uh, it is a giant terrestrial, that's a minus two, so I get minus three. And the star's habitability modifier, but that's a zero. So I stay at minus three. So to get a nine, for this planet to become habitable, it actually needs a 12. And I'll roll right now, and I got a seven. So it is not habitable. This one I'm not even going to roll for. I can pretend to roll and get a 9. But it doesn't have, it has a normal atmospheric pressure, so no um, negatives for that. It's not giant terrestrial. Um, star's habitability modifier is 0, so 
that wouldn't count for it either if you were rolling it. But I just want to say, yeah, that's habitable, of course. That's I want that to be habitable. All the rest, everything else, isn't in the habitability zone, so it doesn't matter. And, yeah, is actually not applicable to most of these. For example, asteroid belts and empty space. <laughs> uh, could not be habitable, or actually... You know, anyways, so we'll go back to luminosity. We were at luminosity. We already figured out this number. Okay, so we just have to take one divided by the radius of the planet that we want to do. And we're going to do just the terrestrial. So starting with the dwarf terrestrial over here, the radius is 0.32. And the calculation, which you can see on page 110, if you want to go look at it, and I suggest you do for yourself, says uh, 1 divided by the radius. Radius was 0.32. So we take 1 divided by 0.32 equals that. Then it says in the book, take the square root of that. Square root of that number. We multiply it by the luminosity to the power of 0.25, which I already did and jotted down. So we'll multiply that by 0.897900. Ah, always forgetting the points. 0 0.897900. And that gives us this. And we multiply this by 277 giving us a temperature of 439.6. So on the temperature for the dwarf terrestrial, I forgot the number already, 439.6. I'll just write 440, round it up. Giant terrestrial, we need its radius, 0.56. So 0.56, no, no wrong started wrong again 1 divided by 0.56 the square root of that number multiplied by the calculation we did earlier 0.897900 I don't need to put those two zeros on the end <laughs> I know um, gives us 1.19, and we multiply that by 277, is 332 degrees Kelvin. I forget these numbers as soon as I look at them. 332.3, so 332 is that. Uh, this planet's habitable, and we don't know its temperature yet. We have to roll for that later. The only other one that we can do... Uh, I forgot. I forgot something. I didn't do that last calculation right. If the world has a high pressure, high atmospheric pressure, which it does have a high atmospheric pressure, I have to first uh, multiply the radius by 0.8. 0.8. I forgot the radius already. So 0.56. We have to first begin by saying 0.56 uh, multiplied by 0.8 gives us 0.44. We'll remember that. Uh, now. 0.44. Now we can start the calculation. We do 1 divided by 0.44, right? Take the square root of that. Multiply it by the luminosity to the power of 2.5, which turns out to be 0.8979. Um, and multiply that by 277, giving us our temperature of 374. So that's the correct... 374. We can also do 
the terrestrial way out here, it has a distance of 15.68 and has a low pressure, doesn't it? What did I say? A low pressure. Uh, for the low pressure, I need to first multiply the radius, which I forgot again, 15.68 by 0.95. So 15.68 times 0.95 gives us uh, 14.89. So we start the calculation by doing 14.89. Remember that? 1 divided by 14.89. Take the square root of that, giving us this. Multiply it by the luminosity of the power of 0.25, which turns out to be 8, no, 0.8979. Giving us this, and we multiply that by 277, giving us 64.4. I'll just write 64 degrees uh, here. Kelvin. These are all in Kelvin. 64 degrees to Kelvin is pretty cold, I think, which makes sense because it's very far out in the solar system. The rest are not applicable. Oh, that's going to bother me. Temperature finished. Um, roll uninhabitable world's atmospheric composition. Okay. So this takes us down to this table here. Let's see, what page was, did that say? Page 109, atmospheric composition. Yeah, you say the uninhabitable atmospheric composition table. And how do we roll on this? Apply the following modifiers. This is only for the giant terrestrial and the terrestrial far out at the end of the solar system. Um, so we need to apply the following modifiers. Minus two if the planet is cold. That will affect the uh, terrestrial way out. Plus two if it's closer. We don't have any that will be closer. Minus one, if the planet is large with an escape velocity over 1,200. Do, is the giant terrestrial's escape velocity over 1,200? Giant terrestrial's escape velocity is over 1,200. So that will add um, a minus one to its roll. Uh, and a plus one, if the planet is small, escape velocity under 7,000. So that will actually affect this planet out here whose escape velocity is under 7,000. So that's going to be a plus one to each roll. Whew! That's a lot of uh, modifiers. So we'll start with the giant terrestrial. Let's get the modifiers straight first. The giant terrestrial. Secondly, <coughs> modified. M minus two if the planet our moon is cold. It's not cold. It's in the life zone. Plus two, if it's hot closer, we have none. So we have a minus one if the planet is large, escape velocity over 1200, so that will affect us, a minus one to all of our rolls. Um, a minus one to all of our rolls is all that we get for the giant terrestrial. So the way this works is simply you roll 2d6 for your base. You can see on the uninhabitable atmosphere composition table, uh, it's a pretty st standard table. In the base column, we will roll 2d6. I got an 8, and that gives me, with a modifier of minus 1, gives me a 7, meaning my base is going to be nitrogen. Oops. Nitrogen. Secondary, roll for that. 
Oh, two minus one gives me one. Ooh, methane. Methane. Now, when it comes to trace and special traces, I don't know if I'm doing this right. You could just write, roll on the trace and special traces tables just like I did for the last two. But if you look on under trace, if you get an 11, there's a star there and a 12, there's two stars. And if you look at get down at the bottom where you have the star, so if you've rolled an 11 on the trace table, it says roll again twice on this column ignoring results of 11 or 12. I take that to mean that my trace element and special traces will both only come from the trace column. Because if I were to roll a 12 on the trace column, it says roll again once on this column, ignoring 11 or 12, and once on the special traces table. Right? Uh, I've read it through a couple of times. I didn't make sense of it so much um, but that's how I'm just going to do it so for my trace elements I'm simply going to roll on the trace table I get a minus one. Oh, I only got a three so nothing uh, three gives me no trace elements none that's what it says no trace elements and I suppose now my special traces are simply going to be rolled from the trace table and I got a 7 minus 1 giving me a 6 which says argon I don't know if I did that correctly but I don't really care um, that's how I do it if you figure it out better just write in the comments now we have to determine the percentages of each one and for we'll start with the special trace and the trace and all I do is roll 1d6 and divide it by 2 and I rolled a 2 which gives me um, a 1 meaning argon is only going to be 1 percent <clears throat> None. I don't need to roll trace uh, the percent of no, <laughs> of nothing. Um, uh, so it doesn't matter. For the secondary, if, if I were to roll this, it would be the same thing. 1d6 divided by 2. Same as for special traces. Secondary, I roll 5d6 to find the percentage of secondary. I have 10, 14, 17, 20, 20% 20 methane. So, 20%. Nitrogen is the base, and it's simply going to be uh, the rest. So, 20 plus 1 is 21%. Uh, 100 minus 21 is 79 percent so nitrogen makes up 79 percent of this atmosphere now I roll for my terrestrial way out gotta figure out its modifiers first so minus 2 if it's cold further from the star than the life zone. That applies. <clears throat> okay, nothing else except for ah, uh, plus one if the planet is small. Escape velocity under 7,000. So I get a minus two because it's cold and a plus one giving me a modifier of minus one. So I go to my table, roll for the base, 2d6. I got a 12 minus 1, give me 11, meaning it will be carbon dioxide. For my secondary, 
I got a 9 minus 1 giving me an 8, meaning it's also carbon dioxide. The book actually goes over what happens if your base and secondary are the same. And they say it's fine. That can happen. It's They give some examples with, I think, Venus. Um, I, I don't really understand what that means, but they say it's possible, so that's fine. I did notice that in the trace column it is also possible to get carbon dioxide. And I think that that would be weird to say you have a base atmosphere of carbon dioxide with trace elements of carbon dioxide. So if I get carbon dioxide on the trace table, I'm going to roll again. So I'll roll 2d6. I got a 5 minus 1. Give me a 4, meaning it's sulfur dioxide. I don't have to worry about it. Sulfur dioxide. And for my special traces, I'm going to roll... Um, on the trace table again because I didn't get a 12 in the last roll. Again, I don't really know if that's exactly how it works. Oh, I got an 11. Ha! Oh, an 11. Oh, minus 1. Nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide. So, roll for the percentages. For this one, I got a 3 divided by 2, so that would give me a 1 point... no. 1.5% for that nitrous oxide. Sulfur dioxide, same roll. 6 divided by 2, give me 3%. Uh, oh, did I just... What did I do? I just erased sulfur dioxide. Uh, I'll just write that again. Uh, and it was 3%. 3%. Uh, carbon dioxide, I guess, roll 5 for this. 12, 14, 17%. I find that a little bizarre that I would roll that if it's the exact same as the base. Uh, you know, so... Uh, wouldn't the anyways I, I if you want to do it differently you could do it differently it doesn't matter so I got to add up everything 17 plus 3 is 20 21.5 100 minus 21.5 is 78.5 meaning the base is going to be 78.5 percent of the atmosphere I might have done that wrong uh, Maybe those two just get added together because it's the same, but it doesn't really matter. What matters is you should know how to do that now. So that part is finished with all the percentages. Calculate life zone position modifier. Okay, this is a weird one. We only need to do the life zone position modifier for our habitable planet. Um, the calculation for this is going to be our planet's orbit minus the life zone inner edge divided by the life zone width. And we have the life zone width already. It's here. We calculated it before 0.487. So we also need the radius of our terrestrial planet, the habitable one, which is 0.8. Just look at that equation again. So it's going to be 0.8, which is the planet orbit, minus the life zone inner edge. And that is this number here. So we start by doing that. We take 0.8 minus, can't see the number, 0.471 gives us this. And we divide this number by the width. 0.487. So divided by 0.487 and it gives us a pos life zone position modifier of 0.675. Uh, I'll write 0.68 and I'm going to write this here where it says life zone position modifier. I forgot the number already. 0.68 is what I'll give it. 0.68. 
So that's our life zone position modifier. That step is finished. We only have to do that for any habitable planets. Roll surface water. So we're getting into this table here, filling this out. Roll surface water. And it says what the modifiers are going to be. We have a 2d6 roll, and we're going to multiply that by the life zone modifier and the escape velocity modifier. Life zone modifier is here, escape velocity modifier is here. And it's going to be a 2d6 roll. And we will find the appropriate table to roll on on page 111. It says the habitable planet features table. So the first column says just modified roll. The second one says percent surface water. That's what I'm rolling now. I'm going to roll 2d6. Oh, it's going to be low. It's going to be really low. Uh, I got a 5. We have to take that 5, that's our 2d6 roll, and we have, to modify, uh, we have to multiply them by both of these numbers. So we take a 5, let's see those numbers. Right. 0.68 and 0.88. Take our 5, multiply it by point. 6, 8, multiply by 0.88, gives us a 2.9, giving us a 3, which for percent surface water is going to be 30%. So I can just write 30%, well, 30% 30 surface water. Ah, okay. So we've rolled for surface water. That's finished. Roll atmosphere. The modifier is 2d6, and the only modifier is minus 2 if you're a giant terrestrial, which it's not. So it is a 2d6 with no modifiers. Um, this is another one. You, you don't have to roll this because uh, you can just make your habitable planet any way you want. So you take a breathable, nice breathable atmosphere and so on. I might do that see what I get. Actually, I got an 8, and that would give me a breathable atmosphere anyways. So, atmosphere is going to be breathable. That's the next step finished. Roll for temperature. That's the next thing on the on our table. So, Oh, did it say about modifiers? Roll temperature, 2d6 by the life zone modifier, and plus one for low atmosphere, minus one for high atmosphere. That doesn't apply to either of those, so it's simply going to be a 2d6 roll multiplied by the life zone modifier, which is 0.68. 2d6 roll, I have uh, six times 0.68, 6 times 0.68 gives me a 4. So if I look on my table, ooh, I'll just write that in. I get um, 4. Is it? Four. It's going to be high. Temperature is going to be high. Hot planet. Hot planet, very little water. Uh, that's going to be a desert planet. Although they go, they are very specific in the book to say desert planets don't exist. Even the driest planets have, you know, some wet zones and probably even glaciers and so on and so forth. And we'll come to that soon. Whoops. Uh, temperature. Roll highest life form. So it's only going to be the modifier for this is the habitat habitability mod of your star. And that is this. Mine is a zero, so it's a 2d6 with uh, no modifiers. And that's for the highest life form. And I got a six, which gives me amphibians. Amphibians. 
That's highest light form ruled. Describe terrain, yeah. Um, it says on page 112, 113, this isn't anything you roll for, this is just... Ah, I, um, yeah, actually forgot something, sort of. Our temperature is high, meaning we can now fill out the temperature for our habitable planet, which I accidentally wrote as not applicable here, now. And you can see that on page 112, it says a high base temperature indicates an equatorial average of 307 Kelvin. So I'll just write 307. That's the temperature in Kelvin for that planet based on this roll only. So we've remembered that. We've in Describe Terrain. Describe Terrain is also on page 112. It gives you a table and it says if your planet is such and such Kelvin, mine 298 to 307. It says, um, you know, it has a uh, savanna, forest, jungle, swamp, desert. Uh, it says associated weather modifiers, rain, wind, blowing sand. I, I don't even record the associated weather modifiers, but by all means, put another row in that just let, gives you a place to do that if you want to. And this isn't all. You shouldn't just say, okay, it's that temperature, so it has that climate. There's also, if you go down to page 113 and read, it's going to tell you different things about, okay, if your planet is hot, but it has a lot of water, then it's going to be more like this. And if it's uh, hot and has very little water, then it's going to be a little more like this. Um, for example, if the planet's equatorial temperature is above 298, it is, and water coverage is below 60%, it is. Um, the planet will also tend to be arid, but the terrains will lean toward warmer options, plain, savanna, desert, etc. Um, so that I read on page 113, and there's a bunch of stuff for different, all the different, you know, that will zero in on what your planet looks like. So the terrain, what did it say? Plain, savanna, desert. Plains, Savan, how do you spell Savan? Yeah, uh, and desert. That's fine for me. That's all I need. You can put a lot more, and you can come up with whatever you want. You can say, oh, in the south, there's a lot of mountains or whatever. You know, it's all up to you. Um, so that step is finished. Describe terrain. Roll continents. Roll continents is on page 113 as well. It's just in, there's no table. It's just written. Um, all you're going to do is roll 1d6, but with some modifiers. So let's see if any apply to us. If the planet is less than 9, no. If the planet has less less than 30% water coverage, it doesn't have less than 30% water coverage. It has exactly 30. So that doesn't apply. If the planet's over 15,000 kilometers in diameter, no, that doesn't apply. And if the planet is at over 60% water coverage, that also doesn't apply. So I have no modifiers. I simply roll 1d6. I get a 3. That's the number of continents on this planet. So we have continents. Then we come... Ah! Last step. Look, we're basically almost finished. Special features. I'll talk about special features. I've only got special features on this um, planet here. That's the only one that I think it really makes a difference for. If you want to go to another planet and explore it, then you can roll for a special feature when you get there. Um, if you want to. I'm just going to do it once to show you how it's done. It's pretty easy. I just need to see. Okay, special features. If the, okay, results on the table are generated by rolling 2d6. If the result is 8 or higher, then roll 2d6 on the special features table. So, to get a special feature, you can do this for any planet in your solar system. 
not just the habitable ones. Um, but according to the book, you roll an eight to see if it has a special feature and then roll 2d6 on the special features table. Uh, this second rule is modified by adding the habitability modifier from the primary stats table, mine is zero, then adding the following modifiers as appropriate, minus four for ice, giants, gas giants, giant terrestrials, no, uh, minus three for giant, no, uh, it doesn't get any modifiers according to this book on the special features table. Uh, if you don't want to roll, if you just want it to have a special feature, obviously don't roll to see if you get an 8. I got an 8! I actually did. Uh, so this planet would have a special feature. Let's see what kind of special feature. They're not often good. Oh, sometimes, sometimes, though, they're excellent. I rolled a 10, and if you look on the special features table, it says my planet has a Star League facility, which is occupied. I don't even know what that means. I know what a Star League facility would be. Um, but does that mean, like, it's occupied still by Star League people? A scientific military mining or pre-colony base. This relatively small facility stay, still possesses items of is interest, resale value, and may host inhabitants. I bet you there's a table that you can roll on in some book somewhere that if you find a Star League um, facility, what do you find, you know? Um, it doesn't say anything about whether it's occupied. I'm wondering, is it occupied still by, like, the descendants of the people from the Star League? Or is it just occupied by a bunch of pirates? Then you'd have a battle on your hand. That's actually kind of cool. So I'll just write in Star League um, Facility Occupied. Ooh, crazy. And you, if you want to do this, you got to read all about it because some of them don't apply in any way. So if you rolled, for example, on a gas giant to see if it has a special feature and you get a disease or virus hostile to humans, that's one of the special features. Um, that's bad, but you can't have that on a, on a gas giant. I guess you could say there's like a space station or a spaceship around, I don't know, that has a deadly virus in it. You got to, uh, you know, shift them around as you want, read the chapter, and that's it. That brings us to the very end of the whole series. Uh, unbelievable. We got to the very end. Last thing. Let's see if we actually got everything. <coughs> Sorry. I have a bit of a cold. Um, yeah, we have the distance diameter, and all of these are filled out, hopefully properly. If they aren't, guys, and I'm in a mistake, and you notice the mistake, well, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. I'm not going to cry about it. I hope you guys understood. That's the, the main thing for this um, video, is that you guys can understand how to do this because it is really complicated but i really like it i enjoyed it this uh, now it's time to give it a name i don't know what i'll name this one uh i haven't thought about it i'll have to think about that give it a name i'll have to give this planet a name uh could name all the planets if you want to so yeah thanks for watching my entire exhaustive series on how to build solar system according to campaign operations. I hope you learned something. Uh, see you later. Bye-bye.